Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Check these big dogs out. What we've got here is a pair of Tony Morris carburetors from the States. They are hand-built, billet, 1200 CFM twin blade carburetors. Tony has a UK main agent here, a good friend of his, Dave Gibbons from Rough Diamond Racing. A pair of these guys did a phenomenal job Fantastic service, can't recommend them enough. They've put these carbs together for us, specifically for our build. So let's rewind a little, go and say g'day to Dave, and he's gonna talk us through these carburetors. Those babies. They're pretty incredible, aren't they? Yeah, and of course, you've got the <coughs> twin blade. So. Yeah, yeah. It's only downfall is that if you've got um, a four hole under carb yeah. throttle mm. stop, mm. you can't use it without a spacer mm. um, or a nitrous bar. Yeah. Um, but what it does do is it means you can get a lot more CFM, which is basically 4150 yeah. size carburetor. Mm. Yeah, one of the benefits of um, the twin blade is that we have these bridge boosters which have uh, upper jets in rather than state tubes. These normally fixed in in a yeah. holly carburetor and mm -hmm. they've got a state tube that's driven in. Mm -hmm. So to change them you have to pull the state tube out of it. These have got upper jets which you can change the size of the jet but they also hold the booster in. There's different sizes. Right. Um, that will change the CFM rating slightly so. Okay. And the nice thing about the um, upper jets is you're not right relying entirely on the main jets for your entire power range. Okay. So you can with the, you, you can effectively set up the car from start line to mid track with the main jets, and mm -hmm. then you can fine tune the big end. Right. Okay. With the upper jets. Yeah. By making them bigger or smaller, so it's yeah. like a second pair of jets yeah. after the main jets. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. 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 They're just gorgeous, aren't they? And uh, um, you've got the uh, two-piece float bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where you you take out these you drain through that one there's a couple yeah. washer in there yeah you take out this and that just pulls the float hanger out yeah and you can change the jets without having to remove the metering block mm. so um because normally with a holly you yeah, remove yeah. the float bowl and the metering block and you <clears throat> and then you're, you're juggling it all trying to get it back on mm. if you're trying to do a between rounds jet change yeah it's three just screws on the side off, and it's a nice easy drain plug mm. but when you buy a quick fuel you're buying a carburetor that's been built on a mass production line, and the person <coughs> putting it together is just doing it for beer flags, probably on minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they don't care. And the amount of times I find the basics, you know, I take one apart that's never been touched, and you take it apart, and the basics are, are wrong. Are yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this is built for you. you yeah, know, yeah, we've yeah. asked you what you've got. These are built for your application. Yeah. And I've done it. The drag week's a funny one. So they only released the dates at the end of last month. So we've been waiting like, you know, months and months and months for them to release, release the dates. But they haven't released the ticket sales yet. Ticket sales go on sale at the end, some, somewhere now. Yeah. Until the end of the month. But they say it sells out in minutes. I mean, if we miss, we're going to try. We're going to try and get this ticket so you can go on a waiting list and whatnot. But um, the goal is to get it there this year. But, you know, if it doesn't get there, then we'll, we'll do the one here and then we'll, we'll take it next year. But I've still got my fingers crossed that we can we can get it there this year. It'd be really nice. Um, that's what we're shooting for, so. Have you got um, experience driving a drag or a drag race car? Not as fast as this. Okay. But I have, yeah. I mean, I've been a car guy all my life. Gonna take a little bit of getting used to it. I'm sure it'll be all right. You've got parachute, you'll be fine. This is the car I built, and that's what I sold to Tony. Right, okay. It's my boys junior dragster I built. Yep. That was my, um, one of my crew, that was, um, he's still got that, he's trying to sell it. A little 1973 dragster, 1275 BMC engine in it, supercharged, running alcohol. It's a 95 Dallara, it's got two litre Vauxhall engine in it. The original Formula 3 injection's gone, it's got a pair of carburetors, obviously. 
um, so he's more like a posto spec car. So we sprinted that for a, for a few years and, and then it played up and I parked it there and I haven't moved it since, it's just kind of sat there. So a couple of weeks ago that turned up and it's a Mark IV Jedi, it's got a 600R Yamaha motor in it. That makes uh, 107 horsepower, the whole car weighs 270 k, which power to weight ratio is pretty much exactly the same as that Galara. I've got to be honest, I was looking for a tea bucket to drive on the street and I bought that instead. Maybe I had money burning on in my pocket or something. But yeah, it's usually the way. It's, you know, it's, it's not a lot of money, on. it's a load of fun. Mm. You know, 29 Model A Ford. Is uh, it's really? got a Riley two port conversion on there, twin SUs, all the other bits and pieces. It's a genuine original 1929 race car. Is it? Um, it's not mine. Mm. Uh, I wish it was. never a really really desirable car it was because it was an owner driver car it wasn't right, a chauffeur okay. car you know so it's smaller than the, than you know the Still ghosts and stuff like that <clears throat> this one actually was the second one off a production line the second wraith off a production really? line and did belong to the managing director can't think of his name the managing director of rolls-royce at the time can't think of his name 